Great pleasure to welcome back to the program. He's been with us a couple of times before, a good friend to us, and a good friend to all of you in the Tampa Bay area. You've seen him on uh, shows going back to the Murphy in the Morning show back on uh, Channel 10 and, of course, on uh, Channel 13 for many years, and now on uh, Bay News 9. We'll find out what he's up to lately. Uh, Bill Murphy joining us today by telephone. How are you, Bill? Not to mention my picture at all post offices. That's right. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I have seen your picture there, but it's not in the good section. I don't know what, what happened, Bill. <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> uh, well, that, everybody needs to be wanted, you know? I actually did see your picture in a place called Mixon Farms, or the Orange Grove store down here. They had your book for sale. I think you might have been the parents there not too long ago, so I did see your picture in a store. They are terrific people. I'll tell you, Mixon Fruit Farms, uh, and I, you know, if people haven't visited Mixon Fruit Farms, they really need to. I mean, I hadn't been down for a while, and they've added a, a tram tour, and they have like a little uh, 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 wild animal farm or what have you, and uh, inside, uh, it's not like I'm doing a commercial for them, I'm really nice, but they <laughs> have a little free taste of a lot of the stuff, and, and I'm, I'm big on free tastes, I'll tell you. I mean, when I was in college, we used to wait for, for, till Grand Union, we would, 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 would have the ladies giving out samples on the weekends, and we'd have breakfast at Grand Union That's every right. Saturday morning. <laughs> tell us uh, what you're doing over at uh, Bay News 9 now. I just recently got on with uh, the folks at Bay News 9 and Bright House, and just super duper people and uh, they offered me the opportunity to do a few things including uh, they have an on-demand channel for people who have the digital service bright house cable digital service channel 340 uh, and we put together a show called murphy's hotspots as a matter of fact uh, we've got three that we've done and uh, the latest one will be will be added in, in the next few days but you can visit with me uh, downtown st petersburg we visited Ybor City. We visited Sarasota, St. Armand's Circle. We're about to visit Lakeland. We're going into Pasco County. We're basically, when we, we visit these places, we kind of set the stage, give you a little visual view of what's going on. And then um, along with me, there are contributors, reporters who have uh, specialty reporters who have gone out, and they do, they do uh, special places, uh, re some great restaurants, night spots, um, places where you can get some... Um, uh, wine, good wine, uh, a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and we put it, put it all together in an 8 to 12 minute visit, and we're calling it Murphy's Hotspots, and, uh, and so far it's been a blast, it's a lot of fun, and uh, you know, it keeps me a little bit in the game, I'm not quite ready for the, for the shuffleboard, <laughs> not, yet. not that there's anything wrong with shuffleboard. You're, you're the Charles Tarrant of Tampa Bay. <laughs> oh, no. I, I woke up one morning. Yeah, well, I would. Oh no, that's that's the ultimate compliment. I mean, Charles Carroll didn't get any better than that. But as as I told some folks uh, at the Tampa Tribune and and, and the uh, St. Pete Times when they interviewed me recently about going back to work, I said, well, I went to see the doctor and he they ran some tests and they diagnosed me uh, having a very bad case of Brett Favre syndrome. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so I was just not ready. I was I was Brett. Brett and I have that in common. Talking with uh, Bill Murphy, who you can see on uh, Bay News 9 On Demand. And uh, I know in case some people weren't with us one of our previous times, Bill, the show I first saw you on, I think a lot of people still remember this one, the Murphy in the Morning show back on, on WTSP. That, that was one of the first that I know, other than that being in New York or L.A., of those types of uh, celebrity interview shows, which, which you did down here. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, that probably, uh, push comes to shove, Doug, that's probably the, my, best, my best memory, for lack of a better word, of all the things I did uh, in broadcasting. I love doing that show. The uh, local morning talk is, is uh, kind of dead. There really is. It costs a lot to produce a local show. And also, we didn't have the kind of traffic that you have in New York or you have in, in uh, L.A. Uh, and, that, and those markets. So we did the best we could with what we had. But, uh, you know, we had dinner theater was in its prime back in the mid-'80s. Right. And I had theater, yeah. wonderful, you know, and, and quite frankly, the, 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 the stars that did dinner theater were so much better guests because they, they, they had already established their stardom. They didn't have the egos. And it was just, you know, Debbie Reynolds and, uh, and, and, uh, and that, that, that type of person, as opposed to these young stars who sometimes, uh, you know, come in with an ego bigger than the door. They're kind of, a, they're kind of <laughs> difficult to, uh, to interview. So for me, it was great. And, you know, that show went off the air, I think, like in, uh, in 1991. And a day does not go by that someone does not talk to me about Murphy in the morning. I give you credit for it today, but it already happened a couple of hours ago. Did it? Okay. At a restaurant in Tampa, and somebody came up, and uh, yeah, it was just, it was fun. It was great for me. I just enjoyed it so much. It was freeform television. I love freeform TV. I don't like being, you know, stuck on a script, and.
and uh, and fortunately, I had the freedom to do that for the better part of seven years. Well, well I, that was one of the first shows I saw when I moved down here, and of course, uh, living in New York, you, know, you get to see like Regis and then some of the other shows. I, I oh, think yeah. what you did, and, and which I have always enjoyed, uh, you did it in a similar kind of way to, to what Tom Snyder used to do. That's why I like those kind of shows. You never quite sure what was going to happen. Right. It was fun. You were saying all the right things. Tom Snyder was... Uh, Probably the two people that influenced me the most getting growing up and wanting to get into the business were Johnny Carson and Tom Snyder. Yeah. And I'd say that Tom Snyder probably had more of an influence on me than even the great Johnny Carson. So you pay me a great compliment. Thank you. I was watching some of Tom. Uh, they have some of his interviews up on YouTube. And I've always liked him because he had a little bit of an edge to him. Sometimes the guest you know, wasn't there and he got a little ticked at him. And that was great television. You know? <laughs> I used to love to watch the Tomorrow Show for the folks who are not familiar with what we're talking about, the show that followed the Carson Show. Yeah. And uh, there was Tom Snyder. He was like six foot four at least. Big guy, yeah. Big, big, lanky guy. And he was a chain smoker. Yeah. There was smoke all over. How, how times have changed. But uh, uh, I remember when he had uh, Sir Alfred Hitchcock on. I remember when he, I think he did an interview with Charles Manson. I remember when he had Kiss on, the, the, the rock or the hard rock group. Uh, yeah, he was... His shows were great, I, uh, I, and, and, uh, and his jokes were funny, and you knew when to laugh because he would laugh as soon as he told them. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but that's one thing I went out here to knock the current you know, morning shows that are on, but basically you know, there's, there's nobody interviews anymore. I, I enjoy a good long-form interview, and you don't see that. You get maybe two or three minutes on you know, the network shows, and the local ones are basically infomercial shows now. So, I mean, it's gone away. That seems it? to be what, it, what it's become. You know, there's nothing you can do about it. It is what it is, but... Uh, I couldn't agree with you more, uh, but uh, hey, you know, uh, every generation um, um, thinks that, uh, the, that that their time was was the best, and I'm sure that the uh, the current generation feels the same way. What do you make of, of the late night TV situation, Bill? Uh, you got Jay Leno now moving to a five night strip show at prime time, and you got Conan now uh, on the Tonight Show slot. David Letterman apparently is retaking the lead there. Or what, what do you make of the whole situation, late night? Well, I like Letterman uh, of, of all of them, but again, that would make sense because, you know, um, he's been around uh, a while. Um, I know that Conan is extremely popular with people in their 20s and 30s uh, and probably 40s, you know, so he's he certainly got his audience. Uh, Leno, this is this is cool to see the networks actually take a chance. They, they're, they're so they're, they're so cookie cutter, you know. To see, to see, uh, you know, the, to do this 10 p.m. show and, and, and see what will happen. You know, years ago, I, I was asked, before Jay took the show, I was asked to introduce him at the Tampa Bay Performing Arts Center, and uh, I was a nervous wreck, and I'm backstage, <laughs> and, and, and Leno comes bopping in, all by himself, not with an entourage, and I was so intimidated, believe it or not, even doing all those shows, that I really didn't, I didn't really have much to say to him. He just, he, he just kind of said, hey, how you doing? I said, hey, I, you know, I'm Bill Murphy. I'll be introducing you. Like, oh, cool, blah, blah, blah. And uh, he asked me one question before I introduced him. He said, he said, uh, he said, are you familiar with the area? And I said, kind of, it was Tampa. And he said, he said, he said, where do the hookers hang out? <laughs> and I thought, oh, my God, what did he mean by that? So I didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know the answer. Turns out, I think Nebraska Avenue is, is well, was back then at least a real saucy. I think that was but a TV part, of, yeah. Of, yeah, but I knew the girly clubs were on Dale Mabry, so I told them Dale Mabry. I said, oh, Dale Mabry. And I thought, I, was, I, I, I mean, I really thought to myself, this guy wants to know for later on. Well, little did I know about about a half an hour later, after I introduced him and I sat in the audience, and then he's doing his bit, and all of a sudden he said, he said, by the way, I forgot, I wanted to thank Bill Murphy for doing such a good job introducing Bill couldn't stick around. He said he had a date on Dale Mabry, <laughs> and the place roared, even, even though it even though really would, didn't make that much sense. But uh, I, I always remember how he kind of he kind of set me up that way. And uh, two and a half hours, he had the audience in stitches. I mean, I was crying, and you know, I, in my heart, I've always been a frustrated stand-up comedian who didn't have the courage to to try to pursue that career. But you know. I, I could go out maybe and do three minutes, then I'd be out of material. This guy went on for two and a half hours, and uh, it really proves, uh, you know, whether you, whether or not you liked him in the Tonight Show slot. Uh, I liked him. I wasn't crazy about him, but it wasn't his fault. It's mm -hmm. just how do you how does anybody replace Johnny Carson? It's mm -hmm. just impossible.